In this short clip, Uncle Bob talks about the time when Dystra almost led the software industry towards the production of high quality and 100% bug free software, and why we now have to rely on unit tests instead. So Dystra was an interesting fella. He wanted to turn software into mathematics. He wanted to create a set of postulates and then a set of theorems, like Euclidean geometry. He wanted to construct theorems of software. His, his vision was that you and I would write applications by adopting well-proven theorems and then writing little lemmas to adapt them. That was his idea. There would be this vast library of theorems, proven software. And so he began to work through the mechanics of how you prove software correct. And, and the mechanics were fascinating. What he discovered was that you could write a simple proof for any two sequential lines. You could write a slightly more complicated proof for an if statement. To prove a loop correct, you had to use induction. So that was a little more complicated. But bit by bit, he was able to build up a simple structure of mathematical proof. But then he noticed something. There were certain algorithms that could not be proven correct. There was no rational way to prove them correct. And he discovered that those algorithms were, were those that had unrestrained go-tos. This is something that actually Turing had proved in 1936. It's the halting problem. It goes back to the halting problem of 1936, which is that there are certain algorithms that cannot be proven, in, that cannot be proven correct. The reason they cannot be proven correct is because they have unrestrained go-tos. He fell back on another theorem that two other guys had written about the same time, which was that every algorithm can be composed of three structures, sequence, selection, if then else, and, and iteration, loops. Every algorithm can be written out of those three structures. So Dijkstra said, okay, no go-tos. Everybody has to use these three structures. That will guarantee that the algorithms can be proven correct. We never bothered to prove anything correct. Dijkstra's whole vision failed. We don't prove our software correct. We fell back on something else. Dijkstra's vision was this mathematical superstructure like Euclidean geometry. We do not have that. Dijkstra's vision failed. But we do have something else. There is a branch of knowledge that you and I risk our lives on every day. Our lives depend on this branch of knowledge every day. It cannot be proven correct. And yet we very happily risk our lives with it every day. This branch of knowledge is called science. Science is a set of conjectures and hypotheses that cannot be proven correct. Experiments can prove them false, but never true. You and I risk our lives every day on things that are not proven correct. We have not proven that airplanes can fly. Right? The science is not proven correct. It has simply been surrounded with so many tests that there's no point in saying that it's not correct anymore. Software could be proven correct, but we abandoned that. We gave up on it. It's too hard. But we can test it. We can use science. And we can write tests that demonstrate that the software is not failing. We don't know if it's correct, but it's not failing. We treat software like a science, not like a, mathem not like a mathematics. This was Dijkstra's failure. Dijkstra thought we were headed, headed towards a mathematics. We're not. We're headed towards a science. According to Dijkstra, no amount of testing can ever be enough to prove software correct because there's always a chance that some case was missed. And that's why he preferred formal verification, a method where the developer begins with a set of preconditions and using logic and mathematical induction proves that the program will always produce the correct result. In this field, verification is not an afterthought. It's integrated directly into the development process. The problem with formal proofs is that they require deep mathematical knowledge and tend to not scale very well for large and complex systems. So they're typically reserved for cases where absolute reliability is essential, such as aerospace software, medical devices, and nuclear control systems, where failure can and does have catastrophic consequences. Check the description for more informal proofs, and if you'd like to hear more about it, feel free to leave a comment. Thank you.